Here's how it's gonna go. I'm trying to write with it. <laughs> Oh, the long river down the river. Oh, that's good. Cool. I got a straight flush. <laughs> Are these the cards, Ben? Okay. Oh, we're the new cards. Yeah, I yeah, had to custom these kids. Really? Oh, you did? No, I was. He helped. I helped him. Oh, I don't know what's on them. I just know the shell. Oh, this is good. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> the match game. Cool. Hi guys, this is Ben from Ben's RPG Pile, and today we're going to talk about how to make a maddening D&D match game. And we're going to start off with uh, what my inspiration for this project was. So we'll get to this hallway in a little bit, but first let's talk about uh, uh, what sparked my imagination in this particular encounter. So we'll slide this out of the way, and then we're just going to show you these. All right. So, like so, right? Doesn't this look like fun? So this is a, uh, um, right? That's a little uh, match game, but that's a uh, daughter style, right? With this right here, this is i uh, I'm breaking who knows how many copyright laws here. This is the Disney Princess matches match game, um, which uh, I get to play with my daughter from time to time, and. Um, I was thinking about a way to do something different in the game, and I was like, hey, everybody remembers playing some type of memory game when they were a kid, so um, uh, every great writer will tell you out there, if you can interweave old references into your game with your player and do it subtly with a taste of style, all the more your players will connect with you in the story, okay? So um, I don't really like this, right? So I made this right here here's my this is my match deck and this looks much more um, entertaining than than that I would think yeah okay so but the biggest thing was I have new players um, in the game and uh, uh, new new to the group and I have old players so I needed a way to bring the story to the new players and I needed a way for the old players to remember a bunch of things that had happened um, in the story so but I wanted to do that with a little bit of a twist. Um, and also, uh, by doing this little project, I had a way to play something with my daughter. So, um, oh, boy. so here's the deal. You have, the, the only thing you have going for you is you're going to try, in order to get to the door and the light that is way down there in the environment you're in, you have to try, you have to use every bit of concentration that you have. Okay, to see and I'm done. I'm about it. <laughs> to see what every what the persons around you are doing because you can't hear anything, you can't uh, really feel anything. Um, so the only thing you can do is concentrate as best you can, and if you concentrate well, you'll get through the you'll walk to the other side no problem. All right. If you blow your concentration, something will happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. Ooh. I know where it is. Ah, all right. Well done. Well done. Anybody know who that is? Uh, that's that gosh, really sounds familiar. I, 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 like I don't know her name, but, but I know who she is as far as. When uh, he gets the answer. One, two, three, not <laughs> you, when you have to actually guess. say her name? Nope, you just oh. scribe as best you can. Is that the girl that got taken by the ogres and then it turned into the demon? Oh, yeah, that, that is correct! <laughs> nice. That is correct. Man, she was bad. Tyrion okay. Dark Seeker. Yeah, there it is. Yep, that's who that was. So here's the point of the project. Uh, so the group is playing Thunderspire Labyrinth. They're near the last portion of the game. The Inner Sanctum is deep into the game. Um, they just finished the Proving Grounds. But what bugged me about it was, even of course the Proving Grounds was difficult, but I just felt like if you're going to put two doors there, uh, you open that first door, it shouldn't just lead you 10 feet later to another door. That's, there's nothing to that. Maldrick, who's one evil Noel, right? He's going to come up with something smarter than that. So um, that's where we decided to, uh, I decided to have a bit of a hallway 
uh, encounter here and the group is they haven't rested in a long time hit points are real valuable healing surge is real valuable and I didn't want to do something huge but I wanted there to be some tension and some pressure and some uh, why is this happening uh, kind of move and and so that's a uh, that's uh, kind of the point of this particular encounter Okay, this is your final product right here, right? The, the group in the Proving Grounds uh, fought and killed a black dragon, and so that's a memorable kind of event. So that seemed like a natural for the um, match cards, okay? Uh, 36 cards in all that I had to make, or 72 individual um, cards uh, total. So first thing was uh, I had to think of things that the group had encountered so far in the module. So, you know, they um, encountered this historian um, uh, in the inn, and he gave him some, Valdrick, he gave him some valuable information, so he's a memorable, memorable character. I made him kind of the uh, town drunk, and the more liquor you uh, put in him, the more he would tell you about uh, the story. So, um, th uh, that was no easy feat, but I did make my um, uh, card sheets, like so. All right. Bad. Okay. Just like that. Another one. I'll take some pictures of these and put them up. But just so I and I printed them print out uh, two piece. Okay. And then I took a paper cutter and I basically just uh, cut around them. Okay. So cut out your piece with paper cutter. Okay. Make sure you got a backing. I use the old Warlord cards. Okay. You have your sleeve. Right. Now, one thing that's important is, remember, these are going to be flipped over like that. If you put the card, which the picture is different, if you put that up, it can be seen through the light. And that's no good. You need everything to look exactly the same. So it's very important that the back of your um, backing of your card which looks the same in every instance, um, that's what's visible, okay? But then you take your piece here, slide it like that. Oh, yeah, this is where I screwed up last time. Last time. It actually has to be like that because this is going to be what sees a little bit through, and then you slip that into your card sleeve. Okay guys, so this is kind of the hallway that I set up, right? I used um, Gale Force 9 uh, markers to kind of give it like a whole ground fog smoke kind of effect. Um, I had it visibility be really poor. Um, I had the, uh, the group, once they kind of passed a certain threshold in the hallway, uh, the group couldn't hear each other speak. Um, I had it where they lost their sense of touch. Um, I had it where they thought even though they were walking a straight line, um, the exact opposite was really occurring. They were kind of moving all clumsily through the hallway. So they lost their <clears throat> all their senses. They lost the ability to see with, uh, with much anything. They couldn't hear anything. They couldn't really smell or feel anything. Um, uh, so that kind of made it where they couldn't just throw a rope down. They actually tried to throw a rope down and I had, I had it kind of dissolve um, after it threw a thir certain threshold. Uh, if they tried to feel along the walls, they couldn't feel them, and that made it difficult to walk forward. So the game, uh, they could, with a, they had a little bit of eyesight, and they could follow the person in front of them, uh, their their footsteps. But if they tried to put their hand on the person's in front of them shoulder, again, they couldn't feel anything, so they they couldn't really tell if they were even on their person's shoulder. So. Um, the only thing they could do was look at the steps in front of them and concentrate as best as they can. And that kind of set the stage. Okay guys, the, the rules, just like your normal match game, the group, there were six of us uh, in our game group, and uh, they weren't allowed to write any notes, they weren't allowed to give any table talk hints. Um, they took turns. Uh, 
trying to get a match. Um, and uh, basically, uh, here are a few tips on how I did the rules. First thing is, uh, after the group had gone around, after everybody in the group had gotten one match for starters, they could use their wisdom or their dexterity to uh, um, get an extra card with wisdom so they could flip three cards up at once. Or they could, um, uh, if they had a lousy wisdom, they could roll their decks uh, to take half damage. Okay, and here's how damage kind of worked in the game. I used uh, three different types of damage. Okay, I had the um, uh, spikes that would shoot up from the floor. That could be 1d4. Uh, I had uh, darts that would shoot from the walls. 1d6. And then I had um, uh, uh, cold rays of energy shoot in from the ceiling and that could be 1d8. And I rolled a 1d6 to determine what the damage was. Um, 1 through 3 got gotcha, you the 1d4 worth of damage. Uh, 4 uh, and 5 got gotcha, you uh, darts from the walls and if I roll the 6 on here you took an 8 sided worth of damage. Um, ideally I was shooting for lowest damage would be about 12 and the highest damage would be um, somewhere about around 30 and uh, believe it or not I came pretty close to those results so I was quite pleased with that. Okay so the uh, Totes, he was the guy who actually made it through. He got the most matches. So to me, most matches was um, you made it to the door first. Okay. When he got to the door, there's the um, our halfling that uh, uh, just didn't make it. Um, uh, and it. Literally had a bottle healing potion in his hand with the cork popped off, but couldn't get it to his mouth. Um, Totes, uh, again, he took. Uh, I can't remember if he took the most damage. I think he did. But he was able to take one of those healing potions and get some of his healing uh, points back again. I wasn't trying to maim the group. Um, they had no idea there would be any reward over there. Uh, I just wanted to heighten the tension. Um, and be I also had a magic item for the first person that came across. I even had picked out magic items that would work for each person. So I had uh, I gave a healing um, kit uh, to Totes. He's a cleric. Uh, that would uh, resonate with him the most, so I even handpicked magic items, and I was going to give one magic item to whoever finished first. Uh, so again, I didn't just have it be, you know, like a plus one dagger. I made it to the character, um, uh, and that's a. Uh, it, it worked out great, guys. It was a lot of fun, and uh, now I have a big old deck of cards that I can. That's not even all of them. Um, of cards that I can play with uh, my daughter anytime I want, and I don't have to stare at. Uh, uh, all those goofy Dis Disney characters, which I see a lot of, I can instead pick something that uh, might be a little more entertaining for me, right? Look at Gunner. He's a beast. Um, so that's kind of our take on the D&D &D, D &D match game, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, hey, be sure to say hey to us on Twitter. Um, you can catch our weekly video podcast. Uh, I'm trying to do better with our Facebook page. I sure would appreciate, appreciate it if you guys uh, went over to our uh, Facebook page, um, which is bit.ly uh, Facebook RPG. Um, I'd love to get some more likes on there. I'm trying to add more interesting links and videos that we find on the web and we're kind of using the Facebook page to house all that stuff. So, And certainly you can um, uh, check out GamersInAZ.com for all your uh, magic and D&D uh, uh, &D RPG needs uh, and check out our weekly uh, blog on Ben'sRPGPal.com uh, It's a wrap. Thanks guys. We'll talk to you later. Oh, four that's points. That's terrible. Ooh. Oh, that. Oh, that's a. 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 Oh,